Good morning and welcome to our seat of encouragement. I got a word and the word said, I thought. What you think you become, what you feel you attract, and what you imagine you create. So be careful you are not standing on your own way to a miracle. Because you know, whatever you think, your preconceived thoughts and ideas can be robbing you off of your miracle. Let's look at the story in 2 Kings 5.11. Naaman was a captain, known, mighty, respected, but he has leprosy. There was a, a servant girl that lives with them, and he mentioned to his wife that there is a prophet in Israel. If my master will go there, he will be healed of his leprosy. And Naaman embarked on it and went to Israel. Gather everything, gifts, and went to see the healer. And when he went and saw the prophet, the prophet sent word to him that he should go to the river Jordan and dip himself seven times. Hmm. Naaman was so angry, he stuck and walked away and said, I thought, you see, I thought his preconceived mind, thoughts, and ideas that the prophet will lay hand on him or will come and call upon his God and get him healed or will say a word on him and he will be well. What does it mean that he should go and dip himself in the river? Is the river from his where he's coming from better than that of the one in Israel? He just got angry and he said, you know what, let's go back. Praise God, he has people that are good. Who are you surrounded around with? Who are the people that have surrounded your life? Are they sacrifices or people that can tell you to your face, this is bad and this is wrong? People that can point you to the wrong direction when you are going the other way. Thank God he has people that can point him in the right, right direction when he was going the wrong way. And he told the master, you've come a long way. Why not you do what the prophet says? And praise God, he listened. He humbled himself. He obeyed. He went to River Jordan and dipped himself seven times. And on the seventh time, he got healed. His skin was like that of the Bible, the Bible said. What if Naaman didn't listen? What if he wasn't humble? With all we know he is, his status and all that he has. He's wealthy. He was humble. He obeyed. And he has the patience to dip himself the first, the second, until the seventh time to the letter of what the prophet said he should do. And he received his healing. Some of us, we are standing on our own way because of our thoughts. We have to get ripped of our preconceived thoughts and ideas. He says, as you think it, so you are. What it is that you feel, you attract. What you imagine, you create. And what you think, you become. What is it that is going into your head? What thoughts do you have? Thought of good? Are you self-sabotaging yourself with negative thoughts? A self-thought of doubt? Thought of fear? That you, are, you can't amount to this, you can't do this, you, you don't have the ability. When God has formed you, created, he said in Psalm 139 that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That means God has put everything in you. He formed you right in the womb of your mother. He knows everything you do, you need, and God has put them there. They know because you are so fearful with your thought, preconceived thought that you have, you sabotage yourself. And God is telling you, this is how you should do this. That you want it your way, your way, not the will of God. If Naaman hasn't gone back to that river and dipped himself seven times, he wouldn't have received his healing. His journey to Israel would have been in vain. That he listened and he received his healing. What are those thoughts that you have? That are stopping you from your next level. You have a business, you're so fearful that you can't pull it through. 
you are elevated in your job and you're so fearful you can't pull it through. Tell yourself positive confirmation that you have the ability to bring this thing to pass. You have the ability to be successful. You have the ability to, to, to do all through Christ that strengthens you. And who are the people around you that have their ears? Are they giving you word of truth? Word of light? Because if a man has surrendered himself with sacrifice, they would have tagged along with his pride and his ego and tell him, yes, let's go. Who the hell does Elisha think he is? But these are people that tell him the truth. And he obeyed, he listened. He even had a listening ear. Some of us don't even have listening ears. When the truth is flashed in front of you, you do not take it. When people tell you the truth, you rather cut them off. You want people that sing your song and then you fall off in the fire. Naaman listened. Naaman humbled himself. Naaman became obedient and patient and trust this journey because he went and did himself. He doesn't know that he did it and he received his miracle. Why are we standing in the way of God? If God is going to spit on the floor and heal you or say a word or lay a hand on you or even give you handkerchiefs to get healed, why won't you? Some of us think you have to go and buy the healing with your gift. Some of us go to, that's why we have men of God doing all sorts of things now because people think you just have to buy healing with, with what God has given you. God is the one that gave you all you have. And you think you can buy healing from miracle? You can buy miracle by your wealth? Naaman took everything to see the prophet. The prophet didn't even touch one thing. He just told him because Jesus is the one that is healing. And he can heal you any way he wants. Jesus is the one elevating you. He can elevate you any how he wants. He can pull one up and bring one down today. He's the one that can make, can kill and make a life. It's only God. No, don't be deceived. For every good and perfect thing coming from above, from our God, with him there is no variation, there is no turning. He's God by himself. He doesn't share his glory with anybody. So if he chooses to elevate you, he will. If he chooses to bring you down, he will bring you down. The Bible says, he that thinks he stands, be careful lest he fall. God is the one that gives it. He has given you, he said, keep renewing your mind. All you need to do is to renew your mind with the word of God. Do not be confronted with the word system. Renew your mind with the word of God so that the preconcept ideas and thoughts you have will not be the one limiting you from where you're going, standing on your way to your miracle, standing on your next level with your thoughts, because thoughts are powerful. That's why the Bible says, guide their hearts. With all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. That's why the devil will have attack you first with your mind with your thought because when the devil attack you and tell you you're not worthy you start acting it acting it if the devil bring in fear and put in you and you become fearful you can't do things if you be consumed with the thought of negativity sabotaging thoughts the enemy will fill your mind that's why job said god give get god take it praise be the name of god and he worshiped god because he knows he's the one that has the power to make life and to take life. Why are you so fearful for the one that takes the flesh and not your soul? You should be afraid of the one that can take your soul. Jesus said, tell the devil, do all you can to his skin, but you won't touch his soul. Why won't you let God be God in that situation? And do it in the way he wants to do it. He said in Ecclesiastes, he makes everything beautiful. Stop leaning in your own understanding. Say, lean not on your own understanding. But acknowledge the Lord. Trust in him. And he will bring your plan to pass, to fruition. Your attitudes, are they limiting you? Yes, you knowledgeable, you elevated, but what kind of attitude do you have? Can you work with people? 
Are you just stepping on people when you have ego, ego centric feel all over you? And God opened a door for you, and then oh, suddenly everybody, you begin to step on people's nose. I think you can balance. You're going to fall. Because he's going to bring you down. Remember what he told the, the rich man? He said, you fool, today I take your life. And the poor Lazarus was up at the blossom of God. Why are you allowing your old ways to self-sabotage you where you're headed? Your old habits, your old thoughts. Get rid of them. And allow God to renew your mind with the word of God that you read and practice every day. That's the only way you can live in this world, in this time, trying times, difficult times. You need the word of God every day to renew your mind, to strengthen you. Because life is hard and life is throwing you blows upon blows. All you need to stand firm is the word of God. You hear the word of God every day. You get angry like Naaman and stack away and blaspheme the word of God, or you humble yourself, obey the word of God. Because he said, obedience is better than sacrifice. And God is the rewarder that those that diligently seek him. I want to tell you that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It doesn't matter the situation around you. He is your healer. He is your fixer. He is your restorer. He will fix that situation. He will turn things around. All you need to do is be obedient to him. Let's make this affirmation. I am surrounded by supportive, positive people who believe in me and want to see me succeed. I choose to think positively and create a wonderful and successful life for myself. Today, I abandon my old habits and take up new, more positive ones. I overcome self-sabotaging and negative thoughts. I am at peace. I have patience. And I'm learning to trust God with this journey. May God bless our affirmation. He said in Jeremiah 29:11, the thought I have for you, are for good to give an expected end. I love you. Have a wonderful day.